NASCAR won uh, best in class and also most elegant in uh, Pebble Beach in 1976. That's 50 years ago. Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? I mean, you could drive this car in modern. It's not slow by any no. stretch of the imagination. I mean, it, it, it's pretty good. Yeah, we're sitting up here talking about how it drives and everything, but it never really mattered for the people who bought them. Well, after some of Jay Allen's garage, the car features a 1928 Asada Fashini uh, 8A. Uh, this is, I guess, the Landelay or Landelette model. This top does go down. We're not going to put it down because it's very complicated. This is another one of the treasures from the Nethercut Museum. The fun thing about the Nethercut Museum is you see the cars nobody else has. I mean, they've got stuff going way back. They were collecting these things before it was even considered collectible. And J.B. Nethercutt was one of those visionary guys who saw the value in things that when no one else did. You know, I always tell the story of how I got my Landy Lamborghini Mura for free because the engine wasn't running right, it was blown. And a guy gave it to me because he couldn't sell it for anything. Well, uh, and that was in the 80s. J.B. goes back to the 50s uh, when these type of cars were considered Ridiculous. Why would you buy something like this? It eats gas. It's big. You can't park it anywhere. But he had an artist's eye. He could tell what was going to be collectible, what was going to be desirable. And this is certainly one of those cars. I saw the Ficini. Interesting car company. This is really the only car, by this I mean this model and this engine, that they sold. This was one of the most powerful straight eights you could buy before the Duesenberg. Uh, well, let's ask Cameron. Cameron, come on in. This is Cameron Richards. He's the uh, vice president of the cut. 135 horse, that's what it is? 135 horsepower, yeah. I thought it was a little more than that, but Overhead okay. cam. Yeah, it was overhead cam. They were uh, visionaries in that way with the overhead cam, the four-wheel brakes. This was a car that was geared for the American market. The idea was to sell it to wealthy Wall Street types, Hollywood people, and they did. Uh, the most famous owner was probably Rudolph Valentino. I don't believe he lived long enough to uh, take delivery, but he did order one, and there was a lot of hoopla about it. And then when he died, the car arrived uh, weeks or months after his death. The car became a huge deal. Uh, so it was pretty exciting. If you ever see the movie uh, Sunset Boulevard, William Holden, uh, the car they drive is one of these. Uh, it might even be this one, for all I know. It can't be that many of them around. We could check the uh, archives for yeah, that. Yeah, this one was owned by uh, Lynch, from Merrill Lynch, Wall Street. Isn't that correct? Yeah, so our records show that it was originally, uh, it was delivered in New York, brand new to Signal Lynch, who was the wife of, I think it's Edmund Lynch, who okay. was the co-founder of Merrill Lynch. Right. So he had to have a few bucks to have this car. Yeah, this car was $12,000 brand new in 1928. In 1928, when a house is about $1,200. Yeah. I mean, not a big house. I mean, just a regular house that a normal person would live in, a working person. So that gives you some idea. I mean, a Model T was $240, so that gives you some idea. I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful car. Let's open the hood here. Open this up here. Show them the, the straight eight engine. Look at this. The thing I find fascinating about this is the engine compartment is pretty much sealed. You've got splash pans under there that keep dirt and grime and, and road film from coming up onto the engine or getting anywhere near uh, the carburetor. So it's all sealed off here so it remains clean. Uh, it is, I mean, it's just a piece of artwork. It really is something. Notice the tooth belt as well. Yeah, yeah the red really throws it off. So as far as the engine goes, yeah, it's an overhead cam, 449 and a half cubic inches, uh, straight eight. You know, unlike Cadillac <coughs> and uh, Duesenberg, which did make chauffeur-driven models, Americans like to drive their cars, right. uh, as opposed to Europe, we like to be driven, you know. So this was more of a show, and this was, this, I think, redefines truck-like. It really is yeah, trucky to drive. Burly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> to the, and, and huge by Italian standards. I mean, Italians made these little tiny cars, and then this big giant thing, which is barely fit on any Italian road, for goodness sake. So it, 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 it's pretty impressive. The company did not last too long, I think, World War II kind of did it in. Yeah. They got hurt by World War I, then by the time World War II came. The company actually lasted until I think 55, but they were making other items. It was just a name only. But 
the few they did, this was their signature piece, this was their signature engine. Yeah, like you said, it was, although it's from Italy, they really went over the uh, American market for this car. Although uh, it was interesting because they decided not to convert it to left-hand drive for right. Americans because they found that it was easier for the chauffeur to just get right out on the same door to open for the passenger. And as you said, overhead cam, which yep. was really unusual for a production automobile. Yep. I mean, there was an American car called the Jackson early on that had overhead cam, but not in this price range and not at this sort of prestige. I mean, the detail work in this is unbelievable. You really see that Italian artisan kind of thing, you know? 100%. You'll see the interior, beautiful. Is that the, no, it's not the original interior, is it? It's been restored. Okay. Uh, actually, the restoration on this car was very complex yeah. because almost all the parts for it we had to get from Italy. Right. There was really nothing in the States that lasted. Yeah, there was not, it's not, not like there were dealers everywhere. They sold the car and it came here yeah. and there's some guy named Angelo would show up at your house. And, <laughs> I got to fix the car, you know, that's what it was. But, but yeah, this was, this was a car to be seen in, to pull up with a Hollywood premiere. You see these women get out in these, you know, daphnis gowns and things. Hilarious, hilarious. But just a beautiful, beautiful automobile. And as I said, it's a Landolette or Landolet. Uh, this opens. And I guess these, do these door frames, no, the door frame stays in, I see, but the top comes down. Yeah, and then the, uh, the front doors are a little different, so yes. they don't have that. Right, right. So when you, when you take this off, too. You know, it's interesting, so many of the American cars, they kept the chauffeur compartment open, so the poor chauffeur would be out there freezing with a cap <laughs> yeah. on and gloves, you know, and the rich guy would be in the back with a cigar. I, I think the... At times, we're a bit more egalitarian there. Yeah. They put the, a roof on it just to make it. <laughs> I like it when it looks like a proper car rather than a town car. With, I never got the open front thing. but uh, And of course, you've got a privacy curtain there, and you've got a yep. divider window. Uh, you have jump seats. I and mean, this really was the height of elegance in 1928. I mean, this was, I mean, this is the way that door shuts. It's great. And this is a toolbox. Yep. Which is odd, because you step up here. Yeah, it's a little awkward to get into the car, but you yeah. know, the but people buying it didn't have to worry about it. That's right, they got in the back and the chauffeur got in the front and these tools and everything were in here. Are there tools in there? We keep a couple of miscellaneous stuff okay. in case. You okay. know, these old cars, they have right, their right. attitudes. Well, I like the fact that they get used. Okay. I always found this very interesting. It's probably the first car I've ever seen. Is for oh, the it has a hood lock. has a yeah. hood lock and then also even better, your side mirrors right, right just in case someone wants to steal your mirrors yeah Duesenberg <laughs> had those Duesenberg has you know Duesenberg's I have each key, each lock was a separate key so you had on each side of the hood you had them on the toolbox you had them on the truck uh, you got like nine yeah, ten keys yeah <laughs> I had my car catch fire once and I'm, I'm going through the keys <laughs> trying to get the hood open yeah yeah I finally got a, two bottles of soda and shook them up and squirted them in the vents and put the fire out that's what I did yeah that's very, very awesome. Cool. Very cool. Let's see. Okay, let's, uh, this is the carburetor side, and it's got two carburetors in it, so. You sure it's only 135 horse, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's like kind of a low ball number. Because uh, as I remember, this was the most powerful straight eight you could get. And in its final incarnation there, I believe it was 180 horsepower. Oh, wow. And then the Duesenberg, Duesenberg came out with 265. Because these cars just got heavier and mm -hmm. heavier, you know, and so they just needed more and more power to get it done. Yeah, as you say, road hugging weight, this one right. is totally in that category. And what body is this, do you know? It is, uh, well, the Model 8A, it right. was, uh, it's Castanga, or oh, Castagna, okay. Coachwork, right. out of Italy as well. This car is 100% Italian. Yeah. And every time we walk through the museum, somebody, because it's got such an interesting looking grill, well, I just refer to it as the Italian Rolls Royce. And these colors were, you know, the fascinating thing were by the late 20s, early 30s, DuPont had come out. Most cars were dull, hand paint, you know, they were painted with a brush and then sanded. And garages were not yet in widespread use, so they were left outside. So most of them were sort of, people always think, it's not a military vehicle, they're always this dark black green, you know. And then DuPont came out with all these colors that really made things pop, you know. Yeah. And, and this is a classic example of that. I mean, this looks like a modern green you'd find on 
some, you know, like Lamborghini or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a Hellcat. Yeah, exactly. So it, it does tend to uh, kind of tart it up a bit and make it look more. Because imagine this is one solid color. It could pretty, be pretty dull looking. Yeah, it needs the, this is a three-tone color uh, paint technically, and it definitely makes the car. You get to notice the lines and yeah. everything about it a lot better. These mirrors are beautiful, the way they're cut here. Just, just nicely done. I mean, all these Italian, everything is sort of sculpted, and I like the fact that they're all meant to hand tighten on there. Well, very good. Can we, uh, can we take it for a ride? Let's take it for a Let's ride. Take it for a ride. There we go. Now, there's one feature I find so fascinating on this. This is cool. Hop in the back seat. And yeah, you, let's let's you show everybody. Where do you see this? If you're a chauffeur, you must have these. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen, honestly. This way, the owner doesn't suffer the indignity of having to talk to the driver. <laughs> Cameron, give me some directions here. Go right. Go left. Slow. Turn around. Quick. Stop. Go home. You know, just the bell ringer would make me turn around and shoot the guy. <laughs> the just that constant bling, bling. The light would be fine. I don't know why I have that stupid bell, but I guess it gets your attention. But that being said, first of all, the woodwork is beautiful. And I love the gauges. You know, Italians, each numeral just perfect. You know, that's just, I mean, just fantastic. The detail work, the Roman numerals on the clock, very nicely done. $12,000 back in 1928. I'm not sure how much that would be now. Would it be like $200,000? It's at least 10 times, if not more. So it would be at least one hundred twenty dollars to $150,000, which would be a, a ridiculous amount of money. I mean, all these little levers here on your steering wheel, for carburetor, you know, and for uh, uh, throttle and choke and uh, advance and retard. Just beautifully done. It's a three-speed box. Um, I think the Cadillac probably had a bit more sophistication when that came out because that synchro mesh came out a couple of years later. Uh, this was really a car from the 20s, and by 1928, it pretty much run its course, uh, you know, Technology was moving quickly. New things were coming all the time. 16 cylinders, 12 cylinders. Suddenly a straight eight was not that impressive anymore, unless you were Duesenberg. And then it was 265 horse and you know two overhead cams and uh, four valves per cylinder. Uh, this was just a big old straight eight engine with a lot of bottom end torque. Just beautifully, beautifully done. Again, just looking at all the detail work here, the uh, way this top comes down and then this comes all the way down like this. Delete. <laughs> you can block your entire view if you want. The windshield opens, which is kind of cool. Uh, this top comes off. But I imagine this is pretty weather tight too in here. Uh, all kinds of room. You could wear a hat in this thing and drive. Uh, windshield opens, as I said. Um, but very truck like, very heavy. All the cars of this period had this, what they used to call a railroad brake, this giant hand man brake, which was really was for emergencies because brakes faded pretty quickly. If you're going downhill on this thing, <laughs> you're going downhill pretty fast. Uh, but uh, all sorts of little plaques with, what do we have here? Who built it? Where it was built in Italy? The New York distributor, just wonderfully, wonderfully done. Um, any trick to firing this up, Cameron? Yeah, I should probably climb up to the front, huh? Yeah, come on up here. We'll, we'll take it for a spin. This one I have to hear you going, clang, turn left, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, turn right. I watched Sunset Boulevard the other night just to see the car again. Oh yeah? I'm gonna have to put that on my list now. And you got a good eye for that, I would have backed up. 
You know, you hear that second gear whine you always hear in the old movies, you know? Yeah. When the car winds up. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Double clutching is really what she wants yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, you gotta go. You got you gotta to. be very slow and deliberate. Yeah. Oh, that's a real. That's, 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 that's a manly <laughs> horn. Now that you know, once you're rolling, it's actually pretty nice. This feels like more than 135 horsepower to me. Yeah, the, just pulling it. Uh, according to our records, that's what it says. Yeah, that might be true. I thought there were more than that. I know they were the most powerful straight eight engine in the world until the Duesenberg came. Very strong motor. This thing is the size of a Super Duty. I just find it funny how large it is because it didn't, it wouldn't really fit on almost any road from the country it came from. Right, and it's large, but it's cramped inside. Although the back has plenty of room. Yeah, the back's nice. Yeah. Chauffeur was supposed to suffer. That was expected, right, right. You know. a lot easier to learn on, a lot easier to understand. You want to drop the load just as you're slowing down. Oh, you do build up your leg muscles. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I, I, interesting. I saw that Chevy lasted well into the 50s. Yeah, so Asada was sold in 1932 to be uh, Aircraft manufacturer. Right, right, yeah. They had success, but they came. They tried to bring automotives back, and it, it just never. They were too far gone at that yeah. point. I mean, if this is all open, it'd be a totally different feeling. Right. It's just such. It's such a hot day that it's like 91 degrees. Yeah. But it runs nice and cool. The one thing you can't fault on these cars is the workmanship. It's just absolutely just yeah. beautiful. Attention to detail on this is unbelievable. And this is a car that's virtually priceless because there are no parts. No. Anything you do, you would have to make, which would make it less 
quote original. You know? Yeah. So like I said, it, all, almost all the parts for this car, if not all of them, came from Italy yeah. that we had to get. Um, and we, that was back, this car, this is an older restoration. Yeah. Uh, my great-grandfather bought this car in 1966. Right. So, restoration was done somewhere in the early to mid-70s, but that was back then, you couldn't even get parts in the But back then, in the 60s, this car was only 35 years old. Right. Now it would be like buying a car from the 90s today. Yeah, that, I mean, that's it's weird. funny when you think about it like that. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, it drives very nicely, the straight line here, it's great. But they put these massive engines in because you have this incredibly heavy coach work with a lot of wood, a lot of yeah. heavy fabrics, a lot of insulation to keep it as quiet as possible. Yeah, all this wood that you see is all solid. None, none of it's like, uh, a, yeah, none it's, of it's like how they made it, it back then. It's not veneer. No. Who knows? Maybe they'll bring this name back. They're bringing back the Spano Suiza. Is that right? They are. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I know what I'm getting next for my next car. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, most most vehicles that come out of Italy, they're sports cars, and they're phenomenal, yeah. but nothing nothing big like big luxury as much. I'd love to see it come back. Well, the Italian sta tax structure, you know, anything over like two liters is taxed through the roof, you know. Gotcha. And it's staying cool. I mean, that's what's great. It's 70 centigrade on a 91 degree day, which is impressive. And the anti-back fuel system is interesting. Just you gotta pop the hood yeah. every time just to uh, just to be able to start the thing. I don't think you had to do it every time. I think if you use the car on a daily Throw basis, it regularly, yeah, you were probably. fine. It was just one of those things. You know, the car was gonna sit for any length of time. Yeah, you know, because it, it, the crazy thing is if your yeah. fuel tank's full, but if that, yeah. if that back system's empty, you're not going anywhere, right? right. right. I mean, even that, that, it soaks up bumps pretty well, considering how you old it is. You feel the weight of that box on the back. Yeah. As soon as you go around the corner, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 I'm, I'm still here. Well, again, Cameron, thanks for bringing us another jewel from the Netherkit collection. Absolutely, thanks for having me again, Jay. Yeah, if you it's a really pleasure. like seeing unusual cars, cars you've never heard of, cars you've never seen, uh, they've got it at the Never Guy. And this is just a classic example of what the best was from a different era. So, but they got more modern stuff too, but I just love a lot of these old classics because these days it costs so much to restore them, there are no parts. So, when you find a collection like this that has all of these cars, you want to cherish it and use it. So, Check it out, that's another cut collection. We'll see you guys next week.